Well, hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I love having you back here. If you happen to be new, hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm a language enthusiast that currently speaks eight languages and is working on a couple of others. And one of those couple of others is Persian or Farsi, whatever you prefer to call it. This language is actually one that is one of my goals for this year, for 2023. And I mentioned that in my goal setting video because I felt like for the first time ever, I needed to set some language learning goals as I feel like my life is very hectic these days. So I kind of could benefit from some structure, although I am a chaotic language learner. Now, today what I wanna discuss is my plan on how I wanna go about learning Persian. The reason I wanna talk about this is because I feel like it's, there's so much value in sharing when it comes to a plan to learn a certain language, you know, get some information to anybody out there that might be interested in learning Persian themselves or potentially as well um, to just kind of inspire you with some resources and stuff and who knows, perhaps even spark your interest in learning that language as well. Then on the other hand, I feel like for all of the Persian learners out there, myself included, it could be super useful to have a discussion in the comments when it comes to just all of the different things that we can do to learn Persian and we can help each other out there in the comments and see you know what resources there are, what tips we have on learning Persian, etc. So unlike my master guide videos, I'm gonna be giving here like an overview of the language and using courses, tips and stuff like that because I am new to the language. So this is just my plans, this is what I plan to do. And I hope that for those of you that are seasoned Persian learners out there, that you can help me in, down in the comments so that we can all benefit from this. And now, without further ado, let me get started with what I plan, what I'm gonna do with Persian, etc. Now, to begin with, Persian is yet another Indo-European language. If you've known me before, if you follow me, then you know that I I've only learned in the European languages at this point. I don't know why I'm a learner that kind of goes for just kind of whatever I feel a pull to. And honestly, I have, uh, it's just so happened that so far the languages I've needed or like been in contact with a felt pull through were uh, Indo European mostly. That is not to say that that is all I ever want to learn, but in, for, in my book, I'm just never going to go for languages because I want to mix it up or make sure I have a language from each major family. I'm never going to do that. I'm always going to go for passion. I'm always going to go for what serves me in the moment, what I want to go for in the moment. I don't feel like I need to go for languages from different language groups just to round up my languages and just to be like a real polyglot or something. I believe that that thinking is just not very good to have. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So that is not something that I worry about at all. It just happens that a new language I'm interested in is Indo-European or big deal. Will I learn a non-Indo-European language in the future? Yes. I most likely, my first one might be Arabic. I don't know, that's just how I envision things. Right now, I just don't have the time or energy to add a new language. So I already have a couple of new languages. I already am working on improving old ones. So there's that. So that being said, Persian, as a quick introduction, is an Indo-European language and it is also in particular an Indo-Iranian language and it is pluricentric. So what that means is that there's several different varieties of Persian. They all have their own different kind of standard varieties and they're spoken in different countries. So of course in Iran, um, where it's you know, Farsi, the Farsi variety of Persian, then in Afghanistan, Dari Persian, and in Tajikistan, Tajik Persian. And all of those varieties are mutually intelligible, but of course there's like a different standard in each of those countries. And there's also many people that speak Persian outside of those countries as part of the Persian diaspora. So it, as a language, it is relatively big. Latest data placing it at 81 million native speakers and 130 million total, like both native and non-native speakers. So it is quite a big language that has quite a big influence in terms of history and literature, etc. which is why I got interested in it to begin with. What I mean by that is that I want to learn Persian mostly for just like personal attraction reasons, if you will. Um, I love ancient history and of course, Persia, ancient Persia features just so much in the ancient history of the Mediterranean world, which I absolutely love. And I know that one in Iran or Tajikistan or Afghanistan are far removed from ancient Persia, but still 
that goal, you know, in the language, of course, it's different. It's not the ancient one. It's like a modern um, version of the language. But that goal still kind of does it for me somehow. I don't know how. I don't need to justify it. I just kind of have that pull. That is part of the allure. Another part of the allure is poetry and I'm not that big on poetry but my favorite poet Rumi is in fact um, somebody that also wrote in Persian so I would love to be able to read his poetry in the original which I know is gonna take me forever to get to that level poetry is something super complex it's not that easy it's not like reading the news or nonfiction it can be very difficult to be able to read poetry in a foreign language but I am patient so it's mostly for those reasons like I want to learn more about the history the poetry literature culture of uh, the Persian speaking countries just very passion-based project. I don't need Persian in any way, shape or form in my life as in, uh, you know, to be able to connect with family or to be able to work. Um, and like, I don't need it for work, I don't need it for school, I don't need it for anything but pure historical and cultural passion that I have for that language, which is why I'm learning it. I am a very passion-based learner and I need to feel that pull to be able to learn a language well and this is what I like to do and this is why I've chosen Persian. And of course there's also another factor, I just think it's really cool. I don't know why, it's just cool. So there's that. <laughs> so one of the first difficulties that I encountered in learning Persian, and if you're somebody that's a beginner to Persian, you will as well, is the Abjad or the writing system of Persian. What an abjad is, is that you have mostly the consonants represented, not so much the vowels. So it's obviously like borrowed from Arabic uh, as a result of the Arabic conquest in Persia in the 7th century. The Arabic alphabet was introduced to Persia. And then by the 9th century, it was widely used by the ruling class. Of course, there are some modifications made to suit Persian, as um, the alphabet was not made for it, it was made for Semitic languages for Arabic. So there were four additional letters added to the Persian alphabet in order to be able to accommodate certain sounds that are not present in Arabic, but also there are certain other letters that are not pronounced exactly the same way as in Arabic. But the reason that I have this problem with the Abjad is that I truly believe that it's not made for an Indo-European language, and so it just happens to be the writing system of Persian for historical reasons, but I don't know, I just find it like it's difficult. In Arabic and consequently in Persian, what you see is that only long vowels have actually, you know, letters for them, and then the others are not. Like the shorter vowels, you just don't write them. You just write consonants and you kind of infer the vowels. Now in Arabic that works fine, because as far as I know, and again, I haven't started studying Arabic yet, but I have been looking into languages. I will study it one day and I'm interested in it. So, um, so what I know about that is that there are three letter roots in Arabic and they're put into these templates and you kind of, that makes it really easy to guess, to guess what the vowel is because as I said, you know, short vowels are not written. Well, there are some diacritics that mark the short vowels, but they're almost never used. You know, they're just used mostly in like books that teach Arabic and Persian, goes for both languages. And you will never see them in an actual, I don't know, newspaper or book. So why bother learning to read that way when it's not going to be of service to you? So I really don't want to rely on diacritics. And at the end of the day, without diacritics, Arabic is fine because of these roots and templates. Arabic is a language that has this structure that makes it easy to guess what the vowel is. As far as I know, again, never learned it, but that's what I've heard. Whereas in Persian, it's an Indo-European language. Indo-European languages don't have that predictable of a vowel pattern and so you kind of don't know you just don't know what the vowel is you need to know the word itself in order to be able to read it there's just not it's, it's just difficult there's just not that predictability that exists in arabic that's why i think it's this alphabet is not suited to an indo-european language that is my biggest difficulty with persian again i'm a beginner maybe i don't understand this well like you know in the comments if i misunderstood this but i do think that you know when it comes to the language just like using an alphabet not made for it that that is going to create difficulty so this is what i actually started with i know very few words in persian i know very very little of the language itself because i'm still just trying to get a grasp of the alphabet this is what i started with i started with chime conversations like alphabet videos learning persian alphabet 
Um, with time conversation, there's also like other types of videos and this is a resource that might be useful. They have a YouTube channel, I'm gonna link it below. They also have a website, but the thing is like I never actually subscribed to their website. I was just going through their YouTube channel and I kind of find it useful for the alphabet, but I decided to move on very quickly to Asimil. And Asimil is what I'm gonna be using mostly to learn Persian or Farsi. Um, so what I think when it comes to Asimil is that the, the way that they introduce the alphabet like little by little like and they introduce it along with other stuff not just simply the alphabet by itself can be a good way to just kind of get a quick grasp of the basics of the language and learn the alphabet at the same time so i quite like this approach and so Asimil is a resource that I will be using to learn Persian. I've never started with Asimil before. I've always like doubled with other introductory books. Um, my opinion in general is that it doesn't really matter which one you pick. You can pick one, you can pick several and just like go after one, then go over the same material with another and kind of solidify that. I like introductory books in a language because I just kind of enjoy that explanation. And so I'm gonna start with Asimil. As I said, first time ever, so I will probably do an Asimil review after. But so far, I like it. I like the explanatory notes. Um, I don't always recommend them for everybody, but just for my personality type, they work really well. And so I, I've been enjoying it quite a lot, and I hope that I get a grip of the alphabet faster than, uh, than I was able to previously. And this is going to be a major resource that I am going to be using. Unfortunately, if you're not a French speaker, I don't know that you can use that because I haven't seen a version of, um, you know, Asimil's Persian language book in English. And so, yeah, that might be challenging. I'm going to try, I'm going to find actually other options for introductory books that I think would be good for Persian. And I'm going to link them uh, in the description below because I understand that not everybody is a French speaker, of course. For me, this will work wonders as I can do language stacking, you know, use one language to learn the other. My French is not fluent yet, so I'm going to be improving my French as I'm learning Persian, which is an added bonus. So I'm particularly excited about this language learning resource. Of course, I'm going to be going back to YouTube, perhaps watch some lessons from Chime Conversation, as I mentioned. What I also want to be doing is to watch other YouTube channels when it comes to learning Persian. I saw several and I really didn't like them. So if there's anything else that you would recommend for a beginner like myself, let me know in the comments in terms of like YouTube. I think that that is a wonderful way to learn language, supplement learning, etc. Unfortunately, there's no easy languages Persian. Ugh, I'm in pain over that. I absolutely love easy languages. You have heard me talk about that many times on my channel if you've watched like my master guides or anything like that. I just love easy languages, but unfortunately uh, there's no Persian yet. So yeah, I'm gonna look for other channels. Thankfully, there are several uh, major international news broadcasters that also have um, their Persian websites, which I'm gonna be using because I truly like articles and like short form, um, just text, any short form text, which I think would be great for Persian. And I will be linking those below. Uh, you know, I'm not going to use them right away. I need a little bit more input. I need to become better at Persian before I am able to use those, but I'm going to link them in the comments and I'm on the lookout for Persian podcasts. Again, I can't use those yet, so I haven't found them yet. If you have suggestions, of course, let me know in the comments. But what I plan to do in the beginning, you know, besides Asimil, what I plan to focus on is link. Now, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that, but I, there's just so much information on link in terms of like resources for Persian. And for Persian, for me, it was like when I did my initial research to create a plan of just what resources I want to use. It was just so difficult to find good comprehensible input content for Persian at the beginner level. And I really need something at the beginner level. So that's why I'm going to be relying heavily on Asimil and on link in order to be able to find those um, that information. And it, when it comes to link, it's great for comprehensible input. So we you know the short stories and just like everything that's on there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be using because I just have so much trouble with finding yeah, just good resources. And link has that. And so if you've never heard of link, by the way, I'm gonna also link it in the description below. So check it out. It's a good tool to use. And I think I'm gonna rely on link for Persian more than I do for my other languages, just because simply of the difficulty of finding resources. Um, but that being said, please let me know if there's anything that you like and that you've enjoyed and it's helped you a lot with Persian. I would love to learn more. 
But yeah, overall, I'm gonna list everything that I'm gonna use in the description down below. To summarize, what I really wanna do is I wanna start with the basics, with the intro, get a good grasp of the app chat, get a good grasp of the basics of the Persian language um, using ASML and then also introduce link. I'm not gonna overwhelm myself with resources. I do not wanna do that. But later with time, I'm gonna be adding more and more, perhaps reading some non-fiction books in Persian as I progress and I become intermediate and advanced. And hopefully one day Rumi's poetry, fingers crossed. Now I don't really have a plan in terms of like how often I'm gonna study. I'm gonna study whenever inspiration strikes. I have no set schedule for learning Persian. I am not a scheduled learner. The only reason why I wanted to set a schedule for Russian and why I'm kind of struggling to stick to it, by the way, um, but anyways. Uh, so the only reason I want to set a schedule for it is because I was just really wanted to stop saying I'm gonna do it and finally do it. But I don't have that problem with other languages. So I'm not somebody that enjoys structure. I'm not somebody that enjoys a schedule and that enjoys like having a set time to study every day or every other day or whatever i just it really makes it feel like a chore for me so there's going to be no schedule for those of you that like schedules please do not misunderstand me i'm not bashing schedules here i'm just saying know your personality type and fit your study style according to it my study style does not involve schedules so i'm not going to have any version of schedules but my style involves knowing what resources exist out there so that's why i just took the time to create this resource list for like what i'm going to use in the beginning stages and that's why i'm going to be adding more and more resources as a progress with persian so i can become better and better of course at different stages we need different input we need different resources etc so any advice would be much appreciated let me know in the comments um, let me know what you think of my plan, let me know what you think of the resources I'm going to use, especially if you're experienced with Persian or if it's your native language. I would love to hear your two cents. This is a language in which I'm a total newbie, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my usual method. I'm going to go for an intro book and then I'm going to use lots and lots of comprehensible input. I'm a huge believer in comprehensible input. In fact, last week I did a video on it and check it out if you haven't seen it. And this is what I'm going to be using to learn Persian and I'm super excited because it's a language that I'm just attracted to from a cultural point of view and I know that that's going to help. I know that that makes the language easier to learn when you have the passion for it, etc. So I'm really hopeful that that's going to help me. Um, let me know if you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe to my channel if you're new. I would love to see you again here next Wednesday. You can ring the bell for notifications so you know when exactly I'm going to release the video. I don't have a certain like hour in which I do that. I just won't have like a certain day. Um, but yeah, I will see you again very soon. And in the meantime, keep rocking with your languages. Um, and I wish you a wonderful week. Bye bye.